I don't understand where the world will go tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the 5 W's interview show, and this week we have a very special guest, one of my dear friends, Nicholas Aurelius, singer, songwriter, musician, actor, director, photographer, man who cuts his own hair. Uh, He's one of my buddies I met in film school. We became really close friends in second semester, and uh, we haven't seen each other in a while. And I, he's got an incredible amount of music and filmmaking and everything going on, so I, I just thought I'd love to have a chat with him, sit down, and uh, see, what, we'll see what's going on in his life. Uh, how are you doing, Nick? I'm very good. Thanks for having me on, bro. I really appreciate it. Everything you got going is awesome. Uh, Everyone watching, you know, but this guy hustles really hard, and <laughs> it's really good to be here. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing currently. I'm doing a lot of music. Uh, I, I'm based in Toronto, so I met Reese in Vancouver. But now that I'm in Toronto, well, with this whole situation, I was going to go in studio. But now that I, uh, that's not the case, I'm just sort of making my own basement studio, trying to finish up some tracks. But yeah, it's been good. Nice. Okay, well, we'll waste no time and we'll jump in. I would say, and you might you might anticipate this, but I would say the the one person I'd want to have dinner with mm -hmm. is Frank Sinatra. That's exactly I who say. I thought it was. I would have to say. I was going between like a couple actors, some directors. I was thinking maybe Elvis and them, yeah. but no. Frank Sinatra, 100%. The guy is insane. Um, not even just about music. Like, I wouldn't really talk to him about singing. Like, I wouldn't really talk to him about any of that. Mm -hmm. I'd, want to, I'd want to hear his story, um, you know, coming from New York. And I'd want to hear, like, his whole opinions on the industry, the music industry, where he thinks it's going, all these things. And he had a wild life, like a wild nightlife. So it's insane. And he always took people out to restaurants and basically like tore down the place and stuff. He'd just be a ball to hang out with, honestly. That's a but, really good answer. It, it, I, I've, I've drummed up a lot of answers to these questions that I think I could. I want. I have answers in my head to all of these, and I, I want to see how many I can get right. Currently, I'm at one for one. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Cool. We're just going to fly into our second question right off the back of that. For what? What can we expect from you following the release of your feature, I Went Down? So what are you going to do after that? Well, yeah, I think it would be best if I just, um, you know, give a little breakdown of what's going on with the project currently, and then I'll, I'll tell you what I got right up next, literally right after. So um, this film, I Went Down, uh, I wrote it, and I, I did all, all the music for it first, and I basically... Um, revolved on a, on a feature idea that worked to show the music as a big part of it, but have that as carry through to the story and everything. Uh, it's set back in the 40s, so a period piece and everything of that. I've been working on this film for almost three years now. It's been a, it's been a very long time. Yeah. Um, obviously, as an independent filmmaker, trying to basically do everything myself, get some money from here, there, pile it all together. Uh, it was a lot of lot of pitching, a lot of work. I, it, I mean, it helps that I'm in Toronto. So I literally just uh, had a bunch of mentors and I hit up them and ask questions to try and pitch here and, uh, you know, asking so many different people for favors. So right now that's currently in, uh, I'm editing it myself. So I couldn't really say it's a post-production stage. I mean, that's what it is, but yeah. just myself. So uh, currently, I've actually put that on pause for things that are going to be happening outside of uh, I Went Down after that. Okay. Um, yeah, I was planning on... Cool. So jumping into our third question, Nick, I got to know... Where was the most challenging place for you to film for your feature? Oh, all right. So, locations. Everyone, all the filmmakers know locations is a big issue. Now, I filmed completely guerrilla style. 
completely. Yeah. Um, but I did, I did do it in a way that it was um, so, sort of like smart, I guess. Um, the exteriors were all gorilla. All the interiors were were planned before I met with the, the the host of the place, managers, whatever. So I would say the hardest place to film was um, doing the performance scenes, mm-hmm. like because basically I had to book out an entire stage, and with that comes performing the music, which we wanted to perform live. Um, the film is about jazz musicians, so we wanted I, I wanted it to feel like it was improvised, like it was there. Um, so basically I was able to score after months of asking around different clubs I, I performed at, all these different things. Um, I was able to score through my school. They funded uh, their um, sound team or whatever from their stage crew to come in and do all the professional recordings. So they brought in all their mics. They had like three or four sound guys there. Um, lighting i wanted um like atmospheric smoke for the stage so we had someone like patrolling the building the whole time the it was a big issue because most films how they record music is they record the music in studio they'll mix it they'll master it, the whole thing and then they'll play it on big speakers on the shoot day and the musicians there and all you have to worry about is the visual aspect mm-hmm. right again i didn't have a full crew Right, I had my group of people that follow me throughout every single shoot. Right, so they're not too experienced, and we're working with gimbals and all these things. We're trying to get the shots right, but me and my band were trying to perform to perfection for the people recording. Um, so aside from all those difficulties, and we had to get six songs in that day. Oh boy! So yeah. And they were all performance uh, scenes. Like, there's not six performance scenes. I think there's like four, but two of them cut back and forth in montage. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really difficult to get all six songs completely covered, like coverage for every every song, and get them live recorded. Um, And aside from the the issues we had on the day, which were insane, uh, people dropping out, of the whole thing. Yeah, all the classes. <laughs> aside, yeah, aside from all those, we had uh, I had a lot of issues just trying to solidify it. You know, I spent I spent about a year beforehand before the, that was probably the biggest day. All the other days, you know, um, it was fine. There was less of a cast, less of a crew to deal with. It was more dialogue scenes, whatever it was. But this one, I spent a, a very long time trying to book out this theater. Okay, Nick, are you ready? We're just going to jump into our fourth question of the five W's, and that is when. And we're taking this one, hitting, hitting real close to home with this one, when. When do you wake up and go to bed, usually? <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I have uh, some issues with <laughs> sleep, I have to admit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I don't sleep much. And I get jacked up on, on energy when I'm adrenaline, when I'm performing or whatever. That gets me through um, through whatever I'm doing. But aside from that, when I was in Vancouver, actually, because so I went to school, the same school for six years in high school. It started in grade 7 and 12. And the school is downtown Toronto. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in the GTA, which is like an hour and a half transit away from the school. Yeah. So... I had to get up at 5.30 every morning so that I could make it to school on time. And uh, I'd be there till 9.30, 10 o'clock, whether it's been, it was in bands, or I did a lot of musicals or, you know, acting things or whatever it was, right? And then by the end of the week, I was performing, doing a lot of live shows when I was in high school. So I'd be there late, right? 11, 12. So to then go back an hour and a half back up here where I live last it gives me only three four hours of sleep and I basically did that for six years that's crazy so, that's so yeah. crazy to me because I'm a guy yeah. that, like I gotta sleep like eight hours like that's just like, bro I get run down all the time man 
not anymore because like uh, you know everything's I guess virtual so a lot easier to get a little bit more sleep yeah but that that was my regular schedule for a long time and I'd be passing out in class like sounds like you've had a pretty interesting sleep schedule throughout most of your life is it settled down now that like we're in quarantine much or are you still like up super late and up super early <laughs> well here's the issue and I'll go back to my, my little bit of time in Vancouver as well. The issue with that many years, like it wasn't like a couple of months, right? This was a long time of the same schedule. And it really um, messed, with, messed with me. Like it just messed with my energies and everything. Um, doing a lot of live performing and even I wrote my entire film at night, right? In the middle of the night. So it got to the point where I get a surge of energy and I'm still like this from like 11 o'clock onwards and from like 11 to 4 a.m. I'm, I'm round. Like I can't, you know, four. I can't bring it down. So it was a big issue when I was in Vancouver and we were in school because we'd have to get to school for like 8.30 or whatever the heck. I remember and, very well. And I'd be lying in my bed trying to sleep and I'd just be, I'd start moving and, and you know, start jittering. I'd get up the whole, the whole thing. To the point where at 4 a.m. I crash and I wake up an hour late for school or whatever the heck, right? Yeah, I still so it started messing. Late. Yeah, so it started it started messing with me a lot, and it still it still is. I try to I try to level it out, but honestly, every time I try to go to bed early, I just I'm rolling around because that's when my that's when my ideas start flowing and I start thinking of things. I During mean, the day, I'm occupied, right? If it works, it works. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think the majority of the things that I my fav that are my favorite things that I've done, I've thought of like in the middle of the night. It's it's, it's a little bad. I can't say the same. But, I'm, a, I'm a daytime person. That's what I like to do. Yeah, I, I don't advertise it. It's better to be a day daytime person. So <laughs> yeah. awesome. We're just gonna jump straight into our fifth question here. So for our fifth and final question of the five W show is why and I gotta know why aren't you putting out more work for a man as busy as yourself with such an extensive back catalog of, back catalog of work I gotta know why do you choose to keep all your creations behind closed doors like I know about the stuff that you've done and I've seen some of it but like I don't think like very few people get to see all the stuff that you're working on and like you keep it super secretive what, what's, uh, what's why, is, why, why that mentality Honestly, you, you're 100% right, and I personally think I should be putting more things out, but, um, you know, I've had some, some issues in the past with, you know, people and trust and all these things, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, you know, I don't, again, I don't advertise this for anybody who's trying to do anything creative, but uh, there's, there's something in me that that just wants to hold on to things and I'm, I'm starting to realize now especially that I've been back I just need to let them go I need to put them out there so that's what I'm doing right now like I love performing live when people come over when I go places doesn't matter where when who you know I've been in front of people who hate me I'll perform you know like I love doing it. it's what I it's what I love to do but all that music is not anywhere at this point yeah you know you can't get it anymore. And uh, so I, I'm working really hard to make make sure that everything I put out is you know quality. It's what I want, but I'm, you got me, bro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even my uh, my own family they're they're telling me all the time you know put something out you know put some video of you even just singing random whatever yeah, the heck that, it is. The one you did for Paul Anka that one was so cool to see. I loved seeing that one. And like, oh, like you're not on Spotify, like it's it, you can't find the Nicholas Aurelius on the internet too much. Yeah, well, hopefully very soon we're gonna uh, up a bunch of things. Well, that's why um, I had some issues, I guess, with arrangements or whatever back a couple of years ago mm -hmm. uh, with people who started claiming stuff. And so, honestly, getting copyright and everything that's really important. So that's why I wanted to when I came back to Toronto meet with a bunch of. Uh, management teams and everything who can set that up for me because my prints are not um, they're not 
musicians. They're not filmmakers. They're not, they're not artists, right? Yeah. They're, they're business people. Um, and, you know, my brother's an artist, but he's doing his own thing in a different style, and he's doing psychology as well. So I don't have a large um, group of people that know, I guess, all of the things to get it to get my stuff out there so recently i've been doing a lot of work to to learn about those things myself and try and take more of an initiative to get it out so mm -hmm. hopefully very soon that uh that comment will be no more oh, and this excited. this interview is the first the first uh first one <laughs> that's the first thing nick puts out of <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> awesome okay well that is our five questions. The five W's are done. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here today to answer these five questions. We did our who, we did our what, we did our where, we did our when, we did our why. Uh, Nick, it's been a great time talking to you. Do you have anything else you want to plug or want to say uh, before I wrap this up for us? Well, I just want to say I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, I watched your first two interviews and I knew that this thing's going to be really, really great. Uh, I love what you're doing. You grind so hard. And so I really appreciate being on here. And um, yeah, I mean, any, anybody who likes anything dramatic, film, uh, music of different genres, I have a background in uh, R&B, jazz, blues, and I mix that all together. So uh, I'm doing a lot of lo-fi stuff as well. So anyone who likes that type of music, stay tuned because uh, I got some things coming out and I, I hope you enjoy. It's not for me, it's for it's for you all to enjoy and find some type of meaning behind it. So, awesome. I appreciate it. I'm really excited for the day that we get to hear all the back catalog of Nicholas Aurelius. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching the 5 Ws interview show. My name has been Reese C. Setter. I've been your host. This is our guest, Nicholas Aurelius, singer, songwriter, musician, actor, director, photographer, man who cuts his own hair. Honestly, all around great guy. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you. Cheers.